Hello friends, welcome back to the Diabetes Lectures. Today I am going to present one important topic, calculating and adjusting insulin. So this is not only uh, limited to the SE exam, but it is always useful for general physicians as well. And uh, my name is Dr. Sandosh Ibrahim. I am working as a specialist registrar in Diabetes and Endocrinology at Scarborough General Hospital. So first I will tell you about calculating the insulin dose and then how to adjust the insulin dose. You don't need to know much about the calculation because uh, you know you will learn it in a while. So it, the sign, uh, the, the slides might be uh, uh, there will be a lot of explanation in those slides. So just uh, note down what you want. But when you come to the adjustments of insulin dose, which is typically asked for the exam and also in clinical scenarios, we need to look into that uh, because that's quite important from the exam point of view and as well as the um, you know, clinical point of view, and I'll then try to put in some ex something extra if I got time. So, coming to uh, calculating insulin dose, the basic things. So, you need to know that 40 to 50 percent of the total daily insulin dose is to be is to replace insulin overnight when you're fasting and between meals. So, this is called the background or basal insulin replacement. That is why we give the 50 percent of total insulin as a 50 uh, as the basal because you need that for fasting between meals and overnight and the other 50 to 60 percent is for the carbohydrate coverage and blood sugar correction if it is goes high and this is called the bolus insulin so bolus is calculated uh, on the basis of uh, insulin to carbohydrate ratio and the insulin carbohydrate ratio represents how many grams of carbohydrate are covered or disposed by one unit of insulin. So this ratio will be different for different people. Generally you have a ratio of 1 is to 10 but it could be uh, changed in um, several situations. Uh, why we have that 1 is to 10 because it is um, uh, assumed that one unit of rapid acting insulin usually with a normal insulin sensitivity will dispose 12 to 15 grams of carbohydrate. However, it can vary between 6 to 30 grams depending on the insulin sensitivity. And insulin sensitivity it can, uh, it can vary even uh, you know day to day or from uh, you know from in a day itself it can vary. And it's also affected by physical activity. I mean if you have more physical activity the insulin sensitivity can uh, you know increase and uh, then the insulin requirement will come down. So it's it's a very uh, customized entity for uh, a single person, and it is it varies with the background also of that person. Whether he's in physical activity, whether he's fasting, whether he's having got illness or whether he's got any stress. And now next parameter is the high blood sugar correction. So it is known as also known as the insulin sensitivity factor. So for the time being, we will always think about. Uh, uh, as a correction factor, you know, that is easier to uh, think that way. So, after you give the bolus dose, even if the blood sugar is elevated, you need to give another bolus. So, this bolus for high blood sugar correction is defined as um, the, in, uh, uh, the correction factor. And this is actually defined as how much one unit of rapid acting insulin can drop the blood sugar. So one unit of insulin generally is considered to drop the blood glucose by 30. Again it can range from 30 to 100 depending on the insulin sensitivity and other circumstances. Now we can ca the start calculating. Suppose you have uh, a carbohydrate meal and uh, you know the you know about the total grams of carbohydrate and you know the grams of carbohydrate that will be disposed by one unit of insulin. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, if if one in unit of insulin is displacing uh, 10 grams, you take that ratio as 1 is to 10. So, that is called the carbohydrate ratio. So, uh, if you are eating, let's say, if you are eating 60 grams of carbohydrate and your insulin ratio, I mean, carbohydrate ratio is 1 is to 10, then what you do is that you divide the 60 by 10 and you get 6 units. So, you need 6 units to cover that carbohydrate mean. Suppose if you have 80 grams of carbohydrate and your sensitivity, I mean your ratio is 1 is to 10, then you need to divide 80 by 10, then you get, you need 8 units. 
so depending on the carbohydrate load you will uh, increase or decrease the insulin now if uh, my if i got diabetes and my insulin sensitivity is 1 is to 20 that is i need only one uh, unit of insulin to displace or to uh, uh, to process 20 grams of carbohydrate that means if i'm eating 60 grams i will divide 60 by 20 and then my carbohydrate uh, um, my dose will uh, be for that coverage uh, the dose will become 3 units but let's say if I have 1 is to 5 as ratio that is a 1 in unit of insulin can only cover 5 grams of carbohydrate for me that means the ratio is increasing then if I'm eating 60 grams then 60 divided by 5 so uh, you, you will need double I mean of this I like, like you will need 12 units of rapid acting insulin to cover that carbohydrate so that is in essence uh, the carbohydrate coverage in the bolus dose and what about the correction dose so you need to know what is the difference between the actual blood sugar at a set point and the target blood sugar what you want to and you need to correct it by the correction factor so generally you believe that one unit will drop by 50 points and this is also an estimated figure usually if you um, have Daphne courses or if you uh, go for the diabetes education course when uh, once you start an integrated uh, uh, integrated course with the diabetes educators you will find to know about the correction dose and for the carbohydrate ratio for yourself so uh, in this case you know when we uh, generally we assume that one unit will drop 30 50 points or three or three units uh, in the millimole per liter so suppose in this example if the blood sugar before lunch is 220 and your pre-meal blood sugar target is 120 now you need to subtract 220 for, from mine 120 so y you are um, you know that the sugar you need to correct is 100 now you divide it by the 50 units sorry by the correction factor 50 so you need two units of rapid acting insulin so but if if one unit of uh, insulin dro drops only 30 units of uh, sugar in me so means uh, that means that my correction factor is 30 so if I am getting um, suppose the same thing and I'm uh, I need uh, to correct 100 milligram you know pre meal I need to divide that 100 by 30 so I will get a different value so if you divide 100 by 30 you get 3.33 or roughly you know you can tell at like 3.5 or 3 units of rapid acting insulin so when the correction factor decreases that means you need more insulin and the correction factor increases you need more insulin for suppose in this example another person has got a correction factor of uh, let's say 80 and uh, that means in him one uh, unit will decrease his blood sugar by 80 units so in this example it becomes 100 divided by 80 or 10 by 8 so it will be uh, roughly around uh, if you divide 10 by 8 it was it will be uh, roughly about um, 1 point, uh, 1.5 okay so he needs only 1.5 units of rapid acting insulin so for uh, for the correction so you need to uh, think that you know so this is basically known to the patient you know the patient will have an idea about what is correction factors and what this ratio is now what how do you consider a total meal time dose suppose if uh, the patient is going to uh, take the bolus he needs to first of all calculate the uh, his ratio uh, and then he needs to calculate the dose based on that ratio for the carbohydrate coverage as well as the correction dose also so this correction dose plus the carbohydrate coverage dose will give the total meal insulin dose so uh, for example in this uh, in this scenario the carbohydrate coverage is 6 units and the correction dose is 2 units so you need 8 units before this meal dose you cannot simply just keep two, 6 units and you cannot assume that the blood sugar will be corrected so over, uh, over like 4 to 5 days when you are uh, treating a patient with 
uh, basal and borders so you will come to know how much he needs what his ratio is and how much he needs even in the hospital you will have a rough idea about uh, what he is uh, how much he needs but the problem with the hospital scenario and the scenario at home is that they will have different uh, food patterns they will have different foods even they will have they'll be on in the hospital they might be on a diet even and the food may not be tasty and the patient may not be eating well so the insulin requirements may be lower but when once discharged he might eat more uh, he, when he gets a homely food so his insulin requirements may go high so it is always to important to monitor to ask the patient to monitor even at home and then uh, now uh, calculating the total daily insulin requirement so we typically do it by multiplying into 0.5 so if you got uh, a 80 kilogram man it so it will be roughly around 40 to 44 but if you have in pounds you can divide it by 4 and then uh, this is another calculation with the uh, uh, weight in kilograms uh, multiplied by 0.55 this is what we usually do it in the uk and then once you calculate the total requirement you calculate the basal rate as 40 to 50 percent and the remaining 50 to 60 percent you go give it as a bolus so you are um, uh, in this example if I need 40 units uh, your, uh, of insulin per day so the background will be approximately 20 units so this could be glagin, Ritamer or it could be rapid acting insulin if you are uh, using a pump remember there is no long acting insulin in a pump and then uh, you know approximately I mean this rule is uh, uh, it, it's n it doesn't work for everybody you need to be uh, careful about that but in general the carbohydrate coverage ratio can be calculated from the total insulin dose suppose for example a patient is on uh, uh, variable rate intravenous infu in, uh, infusion or the patient is on the basal bolus in, the, in a hospital or in a hospital like setting or even at home suppose the mm, suppose the ratio uh, cannot be calculated you know by several uh, measurements or there is any problem you can roughly calculate the ratio by this rule so what you do is that if you re, uh, if you divide 500 by the total daily insulin dose you might get the uh, approximate ratio so in this case if you are dividing it like the uh, it, it is 40 units he needs and then he, uh, he is dividing it by 500 that means that he one unit will displace approximately 12 gram but if his total daily requirement is 50 that means that the one unit insulin will dis displace only 10 grams so as the total daily insulin requirement goes up that means that he needs more carbohydrate coverage and hence the ratio will go up so when you cannot uh, for example you cannot know if you cannot measure the uh, you know the exact ratio but if you know how much carbohydrate you are covering um, going to eat by looking the food label or by looking the hotel menu or whatever I mean by googling it uh, you can come to know what how much of that uh, is uh, in this um, food provided that you weigh that food so in that case you can roughly calculate like this so if for example if in that food you have uh, say 50 grams of carbohydrate so you divide 50 by 12 and then you get the how many units you can have for that meal and uh, that is why again I'm telling you individual ins insulin sensitivity varies and this rule does not apply uh, for all someone can show insulin resistance in the morning but sensitive at midday because of the exercise so then again the IC ratio will change uh, and um, uh, the, the, uh, here you know the breakfast ratio may be 1 is to 8 and the lunch may be 1 is to 15 you can see that the ratio is dropping and the dinner is 1, one is to 12 so you need to calculate um, correctly how much um, what is the ratio and how much carbohydrate is consuming roughly and then you give the boluses then it really works and uh, for the blood sugar correction if uh, this is also a rough estimate you get the uh, you divide 1800 by the total dose so uh, in this example if you need 40 units you can roughly find that one unit will reduce the blood sugar level by 45 so assuming that uh, if uh, uh, my blood sugar correction factor is 50 and my carbohydrate ratio is 10 I can easily find out how much boluses I need to give for a specific meal 
provided I know the weight and the carbohydrate content. So that is the basis of uh, bolus dosing and correction dosing. And again, there is another important, uh, you know, data which I got. For uh, regular insulin, when you uh, uh, calculate the correction factor, you use the 1500 roll. So, for example, if you are using the 30 units of regular insulin, you have to divide it by 30. So, which means that um, one unit will displace 50. But if you are using a short-acting uh, insulin, because it's short-acting and it's fast-acting, you need to divide it. Uh, uh, you need to divide the total uh, daily uh, dose. You need to divide 1,800 by the total daily dose. So that means this means 60. That is one unit will decrease 60 units, which is true because one unit of short-acting insulin is more uh, you know potent than the regular insulin. So you need to know which kind of insulin you are using. So depending on that the regular insulin and the short acting insulin the correction dose will change and it will become 1500 and 1800 respectively in case of regular and short acting insulins now you uh, will go to some scenarios here so the principles are you should adjust your breakfast insulin dose based on your two hours after breakfast or before lunch that is when you take the before uh, lunch or after breakfast both are the same after two hours it is going high or down, low you should adjust the morning breakfast lows and if it is before the evening meal or two hours post lunch you should adjust the lunch time and if it is uh, after the evening meal or before bed you should adjust the evening meal lows so you will adjust all the boluses here okay in the morning lunch time and evening but the long acting is based on your before breakfast it is a fasting blood glucose level so coming to the scenarios so uh, you we already learned that the basal insulin will keep the glucose overnight steady so let's uh, look at this example here uh, you can see that the bedtime the blood glucose is fairly good but you can see that the next day the blood glucose is climbing up in the early morning so if it is happening several nights it means that the basal insulin dose is low and it will need to be increased but see another example you can see that the blood glucose is high at bedtime but before breakfast it is dropping down you can in, in fact you can see even a hypo here a near hypo so if this is happening it would suggest that the I mean, basal insulin dose is too high i mean if it is happening several uh, nights so then you have to decrease the basal insulin so if there is a change in uh, 10 units uh, I mean if you're taking 10 units or less you increase or decrease depending on the blood glucose value by half unit for the long acting if you're taking 10 to 20 it is 1 to 1.5 and if you're taking 20 to 30 it is 2 to 3 2.5 and if you are taking 30 you need to adjust between 3 to 4 this is for the long acting insulin whatever insulin you are taking this is how it is calculated so for 10 half up to 10 half uh, 10 to 20 it is 1 to 1.5 so roughly you can think about 1 at least and between 20 and 30 it's like 2 to 2.5 so roughly you can think about 2 and 3 um, about 30 you could go to between 3 to 4 so just uh, you know memorize this table for adjusting the uh, dose of uh, lantus or whatever now uh, how to adjust the bolus insulin or the rapid acting one so you need to look at the blood glucose levels and two hours, uh, hours after post meal so uh, based on this you can and always consider the following is carb counting accurate are the injection sites lumpy and the, are the injection sites being given 20 to 20, 20 minutes before the meal and was there any exercise how was it managed and is there any injection missed you have to take into account all when you uh, are trying to uh, you know look into the uh, bolus ratio bol bolus doses
and uh, this is another thing which you need to remember like if the blood glucose is going up or down 2 hours after a meal by 2 millimoles then you need to adjust the insulin to carb ratio then that means that the ratio has changed so we need to adjust it so i will show that in the next example okay blood glucose is rising 2 after 2 uh, hours after the meal so it is uh, rising 2 millimoles above the pre meal reading so uh, what you can do is that decrease the number of carbs uh, that one unit of insulin will cover that is the ratio will start uh, decreasing and hence the amount of insulin will start increasing so if you are on a ratio of 1 is to 10 it will most frequently 1 is to 10 is found so you will go to 1 is to 8 but very uh, insulin sensitive patients may have 1 is to 20 or even 1 is to 15 so it will decrease to 1 is to 8 ultra sensitive patients like 1 is to 25 could drop to 1 is to 20 but in any case you can only uh, drop as is as it is given in the start like you cannot uh, drop the ratio from 1 is to 30 to 1 is to 12 directly you have to do in this step okay so remember the smaller the number of grams of carbohydrate per one unit of insulin the bigger the dose okay so when you see that it is 1 is to 10 you shouldn't think that uh, the insulin dose is high when compared with 1 is to 5 actually the insulin dose here is double in 1 is to 5 so um, pa patients may increase their uh, ratio actually I mean uh, they may increase their ratio from 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 20 uh, on some days but other days they might follow the same ratio uh, thinking that you know they are taking the same food and then you can see that their blood glucose is going up the reverse also happens they might decrease their ratio on because they might s uh, see that on some of the days their blood glucose is going high so they might think that you know uh, I'll decrease the ratio but then you might see some hypoglycemic episodes so it's very important to uh, you know calculate um, what you are eating what kind of carbohydrates and how long it will take uh, the blood glucose to peak up with that carbohydrate load so in this case the blood glucose is dropping down so as I've so shown you you can see that you know you, you drop the ratio you increase the ratio by two units two units two units till uh, you are 12 approximately 1 is to 12 you can give to 1 is to 15 but after uh, and 1 is to 18 you give to 1 is to 20 but after 20 you give it in 5 increments okay after 20 you increase the ratio by 5 but do not jump uh, to uh, like you cannot jump from 1 is to 4 to 1 is to 10 you uh, just have this chart handy with you whenever you are treating the patients so the bigger the number of carbohydrates per one unit of insulin the smaller the dose that's the dose that is to be remembered again so let's take this example so before breakfast you can see that it is almost okay it's below seven so it's okay but you know after breakfast it's going up so there are two values about 10 and one uh, three value three of them are in double figures okay and then you can see that after lunch again it's um, it's going high and then before the evening meal it's going high and after the evening meal uh, also it's high so it rises after the breakfast so the break, bre uh, no rapid before breakfast needs to increase by in adjusting the carbohydrate ratio so you need to check what the patient is eating here so here the bolus should be increased the no rapid should be increased and um, in this scenario you know before evening meal it is going up after the evening meal so you need to uh, chase the you know what the patient is eating here and you need to look into the ratio and the nova rapid has to be uh, increased the amount of new nova rapid has to be increased which means that the carbohydrate ratio has to be decreased here another example is like you see it before lunch and you see after lunch and you can see that after lunch it is dropping you know it's nearly hypo which means that the amount of insulin is high or the carbohydrate ratio has increased I mean you are not having uh, you know um, you you are having more insulin uh, for the carbohydrates that is previously when you used one unit to um, say uh, decrease uh, 40 units now it's become this one unit is displacing 60 units or decreasing 60 units in your blood so 
probably the carbohydrate pressures change the so in this case you need to uh, do decrease the now rapid dose by adjusting the ratio that means here the ratio will go up actually so in a basal bolus regime roughly you can uh, go by, by this way I mean it is very useful for solving problems so if it is before breakfast you reduce the bedtime long acting by 4 units uh, if, if the blood glucose is going well less than 4 or hypo you, you reduce it okay but if the blood, blood glucose is 4 to 7 fasting so you don't need to change but if it is between 7 and 14 increase it by 2 and more than 14 you increase it by 4 so if it is high point less than 4 drop by 4 above 7 and between 14 increase by 2 and uh, above 14 increase by 4 and lunch if it is high point you uh, decrease the short acting insulin 2 to 4 4 to 7 is optimal uh, even 6 to uh, 6 to 9 we can consider uh, as optimal you know sorry 4 to uh, 9 you can consider as optimal but uh, the anyway if it is uh, about 10 to 14 here it is 7 to 14 but about 10 to 14 de definitely you need to increase the insulin by 2 and above it, if, if it's above 14 so increase it by 4 so uh, any insulin above 14 you are increasing it by 4 between 7 to 1 you are increasing it by 2 and below 4 like if it's high point long acting you have to insulin uh, decrease it by 4 because it's it's quite uh, long acting the duration of uh, action is quite quite prolonged so it will be difficult for you to fine tune but the uh, rapid acting you can do it between two to four so like let's say two three or four depending upon the sensitivity so like the before lunch you can you could do the same for before evening and before bedtime assuming that the patient is taking three uh, boluses you know during the uh, like uh, uh, during his day so if it is before lunch if it is before lunch you need to reduce the before breakfast if it is um, if it is sorry if it is before lunch you need to reduce it uh, yeah before the breakfast and if it is before the evening meal you need to reduce the lunch insulin and if it is before the uh, bedtime you need to decrease the evening meal insulin so that's how it works so you just think uh, remember about the uh, if it is more than 14 you increase by 4 if it is between 7 to 4 it, you increase by 2 whatever be the insulin but if you are hypoing you decrease by 4 in case of long acting and 2 to 4 in case of short acting now what about the premixed insulin it is very complex actually in premixed insulin but in general roughly you can use this thing in your clinical practice even like if you are high point uh, before bed or before breakfast you need to decrease the evening male insulin by four units because before bed if you're high point you know the next morning it will be disastrous and even uh, uh, fasting if you are high point you reduce the evening meal insulin by four units four to seven in the fasting uh, sorry in at night is okay and uh, uh, before breast, uh, before breakfast is also okay but uh, here again it, if, if it is between 7 to 14 you increase it by 2 and more than 14 you increase it by 4 so the same thing applies before lunch or before evening meal so if you are going to uh, if you are seeing a hypo you reduce a morning dose here okay because there are only two doses that we keep morning dose and evening dose so morning dose you have to reduce it before lunch or before evening meal you are getting a hypo but if it is increasing uh, before lunch or before evening meal you increase it by two units and four units depending on the um, you know the glucose readings but if it is between 7 to 14 you increase it by two units and if it's more than 14 you increase it by four units and if you, t you are on a twice daily uh, basal regimen that is you are acting uh, you are using only the long acting insulin so here you reduce it by 4 units whatever be the time if you are having hypo and if it is more than 14 you increase it by 4, four units if it is more than 14 but if it is between 7 and 14 you increase it by 2 so it's fairly very easy 
uh, just re, uh, you know study all these slides there might be problems based on the twice daily regimen the premixed insulin which is not very common but definitely the basal bolus and then you have the once daily that's using the long acting so it, it follows the same thing the same twice daily regimen itself or sorry uh, that the, the twice daily regimen itself because the insulin is more or less the same because it's like uh, in a long acting so between 7 to 14 you increase by 2 if it is more than 14 you increase by 4 and if it is less than 4 4 units so any kind of long acting insulin if it's high going just remember that you have to decrease it by 4 units and if it is more than 14 you increase it by 4 if it is 7 to 14 you increase it by 2 now let's do some examples here Jane has a basal insulin once a day in the evening look at this look at this diary so how do you think a basal insulin should be adjusted that she need more or less so you can see that before breakfast it is going high the fasting is high before bed also it is high and during the night even it is high it's it's okay but it's it's a uh, it's on the higher side and uh, anyway with this value we are quite sure that the uh, fasting range will go high so if the uh, basal insulin dose is correct we can see that her blood glucose levels uh, before breakfast and before bed should be uh, okay so her target is actually 4 to 6 before breakfast and higher than 8 millimole buff before bedtime so that means that she needs more more basal insulin to bring levels into the target ranges so Jane has to make a small increase for the basal insulin and she needs to continuously uh, monitor her blood sugar so coming up to this patient you know look at this patient's diary so you can see that the patient is having near hypos in the morning but before bed it is okay but during the night you can see that it is dropping so what do you infer from that so this patient is only using the basal insulin so the basal insulin needs to be decreased here so this is the answer also the bob is going to bed with glucose levels between 6 and 8 he's still waking up with levels below 4 to prevent him from having low blood glucose levels he needs to reduce the dose of long acting insulin and what about this lady uh, you can see that uh, the basal uh, the the, uh, the blood glucose is fairly between 6 to 7 <coughs> so uh, sorry 6 to 10 so she does not actually need any change in this I mean it, it, lo it shows good control now look at this guys uh, blood sugar you, you can see that morning it's going too high but then there is a hypo at night so this guy Albert is waking up with high blood glucose levels despite going to bed with the blood glucose levels within the recommended uh, time but Albert is having too much long acting insulin which is causing him to have nighttime hypos which in turn appear to be rebounding when the liver releases stored glucose in the blood stream giving high I mean he is uh, likely having a somagia phenomenon so giving high blood glucose levels on waking so what we can do is that he can, we can reduce his basal insulin by a smaller amount and then uh, we need to monitor his blood glucose so this is actually not due to the lack of insulin but this is actually due to the hypoglycemia induced uh, glucose raise so you need to think about that suppose if you th you're thinking that you give here uh, without having without taking this nighttime insulin reading you're just seeing this and you're thinking that you know the insulin is increasing uh, sorry the insulin needs are increased and if you increase the insulin then what happens is that the, he will have a probably a dip near 2 or 2.5 like that and it will be dangerous so when you are having this kind of reading you need a night reading to find out whether the it is a rebound phenomenon or whether the 
insulin i mean whether the blood sugar is actually going high and in most of the cases if you are getting a uh, 11 reading here then the bedtime insulin will be more than 11 or uh, you know approximately that because if you are having uh, low reading before bed and high reading at in the morning that means that there is a hypoglycemia so that's the importance of this chart now look at uh, this guy so ba- bob is taking one unit of bo- bolus insulin for every 10 gram of carbohydrate at each meal time so if uh, he has 60 gram of carbohydrate he will use 6 units so how do you think this ratio should be changed because you can see that before evening meal it is really going high and even before bed you have a, a slightly increased reading so they are re- uh, within the target at breakfast and lunch time but they are above the target before is evening meal so it is this lunch time insulin that is affecting these results so uh, now what he has to do he has to de- increase his um uh, ca- insulin to carbohydrate ratio to 1 is to 5 then that will uh, help lower his glucose so when you apply the 1 is to 5 instead of the 1 is to 10 um you can see that he needs 12 units of insulin then so instead of the 6 units he will give a 12 units of bolus insulin during that uh time you know after before lunch he will give the t- 12 units instead of the 6 units what about uh this person you can see that before breakfast it's okay but before lunch it goes on so uh this lady takes one unit of insulin for each carbohydrate portion okay this is different from the ratio so if uh, jane is supposed to have six carbohydrate portions see she will need six units so this calculation is based on the carbohydrate portion so uh if you see that you can see that before lunch it's going up uh so once she has given herself a correction dose and blood glucose levels are all uh within target but uh, here what you can find is that she needs to increase her insulin to carbohydrate ratio at breakfast to one needs to five units for per one carbohydrate portion so uh so uh, you basically um you know when you are going to uh, increase this uh ratio you know like uh, insulin to carbohydrate portion ratio that is this ratio uh, she is going to increase it to 1.5 so when she increases that her insulin requirement will become 9 so she gives that so it's it's, it's a slightly different scenario when you calculate with the carbohydrate portion so it's up to the patient whether they want the carbohydrate portion or whether they want the carbohydrate uh content so the uh, you know actually in real practice patients once they find the carbohydrate portion they it's easier for them to uh take the insulin based on the carbohydrate portion rather than every time weighing and finding out how much exactly this this contains so they might be knowing like approximately one cup of rice contains this much grams of carbohydrate because from their fact and from their experience so you will have to solve this kind of issues also in real life you know uh portion to insulin as well as carbohydrate content or carbohydrate weight to insulin ratio now let's see another example where you are uh, having you now these kind of examples really come in our uh clinical life when we talk to the patients you can find that they are having hypos or uh, problems during the activity so this is a general guide for the activity and insulin requirements so if you are taking a short duration low intensity activity if the blood glucose is less than 5 like if, if you are hypoing on that you need to add 10 to 20 g before the activity a, a snack which contains that but if it is 5 to 10 no adjustment is needed and if it is 10 to 14 no adjustment is needed but if you are doing a moderate duration moderate activity like tennis shuttle cock or you know swimming or jogging that's all moderate duration if it is less than 5 you add 5 to 10 sorry 10 to 20 g before activity and then uh add 10 to 20 g 
uh, if it is even 5 to 10 again you have to take this 10 to 20 gram so up to 10 millimole you just take a 10 to 20 gram snack as a coverage but uh, if it if it if it uh, uh, actually if it uh, if it is between if it, if it is above 7 you don't need a coverage but if it is between 5 to 7 or uh, less than 5 you need that uh, you know you, ne you need that thing so less than 5 and um, or uh, 5 to 7 you need to add the 10 to 20 gram if it is more than 10 no need to adjust but if it is less than 5 or um, less than 5 uh, so again you need to tend to I mean this chart is a bit confusing but there is no uh, I in short there is no dose adjustment required if it is about 10 for moderate activity and there is no dose requirement uh, if it is between 7 to 7 to 10 also but you need a snack which contains 10 to 20 gram when you are uh, your insulin is basically below sorry your readings are basically below 7 but if you are doing a high intensity exercise for moderate duration 30 60 minutes running or high impact aerobic aerobics etc if it is less than 5 you need to make it from 10 to 20 you need to give the 20 to 30 but um, if it is uh, 5 to 10 you need to do uh, give 10 to 20 carbohydrates and if it is more than 10 no adjustment is needed and then suppose you are doing a long duration moderate intensity exam like marathon or playing you know sports for a long time cycling or swimming for a long long time if it is less than 5 20, 10 to 20 gram per hour of the activity and like if you do it uh, for two hours then you need to give instead of 10 to 20 you need to double it 20 to 40 to give and if it is uh, between 5 and 10 that is the pre-exercise glucose you should add 10 to 20 and if it is 10 to 14 for the first hour you don't need to do anything but after the first hour you add 10 to 20 uh, assuming that this level is being dropped due to the ex exercise so Jane uh, is regularly enjoying uh, a morning swim and she does 40 lengths of at the local pool so it takes about 30 minutes so her blood glucose level is 4.8 so how does she want to should uh, how should she she deal with this so she does a moderate duration moderate intensity activity and it is uh, more glucose is less than 5 so she needs to take the 20 to 20 10 to 20 gram before she does the, the activity also goes to the friday night club and then he's has got dancing clubbing so he does for a considerably longer time like two and a half hours but then uh, after this Friday night he has got a uh, hypo every Saturday morning so also does long duration moderate intensity activity so he need to have an extra 10 to 20 gram per hour of dancing like if he is dancing for 3 hours then he need to take between 30 and 60 grams of carbohydrate and Bob likes to spend you know evenings after work in the gym so after he works one hour uh, he works almost one hour so before the uh, startup of the uh, exercise uh, the blood glucose is 5.2 so he's doing a moderate duration high intensity activity and the blood glucose is 5 to 10 so he, he will need 10 to 20 gram carbohydrate before the gym so that is how you um, calculate roughly calculate the snack you know even if the blood glucose goes a little bit high that's fine but you cannot afford the, these patients to have a hypo So something about the carb counting, if you have type 1 diabetes, carbohydrate counting or carb counting is an effective way of managing your blood sugar levels. Even in uh, uh, insulin dependent type 2 diabetes, it will help. It means that your insulin dose can be individually matched to the amount of carbohydrate you eat and drink. But you should be aware of the amount of carbs in food and drinks uh, and carb counting is really helpful if you use basal and borders regimen. So it can be counted in two ways one is in grams or as po or as portions one carbohydrate portion is equal to 
one uh, is equal to 10 grams so one carbohydrate portion basically the ratio is like 1 is to 10 uh, generally so insulin to carbohydrate ratios are different from person to person so you'll have your own personal ratio depending on your age weight activity levels and how sensitive you are to insulin so if you know how many grams of carbohydrate are in a meal and your insulin to carbohydrate ratio you can work out the number of units of bolus insulin you need to take for that meal so I have already shown that examples how to calculate all that in, in before like if, if your ratio is 1 is to 10 and if you are taking 70 in this case you need the 7 units of base bolus insulin so the amount you actually take will also depend on other factors such as your pre-blood levels illness or any planned activity so the first step to start carb counting is finding out more information like do you know which kind of, of your food and drink contain carbohydrates you need to stop you need to think you need to make a mental note of which food and drink so once you are trained in that you know for the like in the da Daphne course and all you will start to know how much and where and what like you know, how much in a po portion or a plate that contains approximate carbohydrates so you will start giving the bolus based on that check all the labels and look into the nutrition labels how much sugar how much uh, how much carbohydrate that contains and you take all the food and drink from your kitchen cupboards no matter whatever it is if it is food just look for the labels and estimate 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 you have to estimate the carbohydrate content of the meals this is what uh, the patients need to know so estimating this carbohydrate content once they le need uh, they learn how to identify and count carbohydrates in their meals they will give uh, they'll be given the insulin carbohydrate ratio and this will help them to calculate how insulin matches with the carbohydrate in the meal so each person will have their own ratio and the diabetes team uh, is uh, provide helping them to provide with one thank you